चलो लेट्स गो हेड एंड नाउ स्टार्ट द चैप्टर ऑफ टी सी एस एवरी वन ओवर हियर टी सी एस का प्रोविजन टी सी एस इज अंडर सेक्शन नंबर फिफ्टी टू टी सी एस का प्रोविजन इज इफेक्टिव फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर टू थाउजेंड एंड एटीन एवरी वन ओवर हियर नाउ टी सी एस फॉर एन एग्जाम्पल दे इज ए सप्लायर सप्लायर दे इज ए बायर हु इज देयर बायर वेंट ऑनलाइन प्लेस एन ऑर्डर ऑन फ्लिपकार्ट फ्लिपकार्ट फॉरवर्डेड द ऑर्डर ही वेंट एड एंड पैक एंड सप्लाइड इट टू हेम now he will also go ahead and send the invoice to this buyer when he is sending the invoice he will charge supposingly 50000 rupees ka sale price is there plus whatever is the gst for an example 55000 rupees ka invoice went to him he went ahead and made the payment now flipkart being the e-commerce operator government was going ahead and seeing that the suppliers were not being traceable and hence government went ahead and told flipkart whenever whenever a supplier is there who wants to supply goods through you please Please go ahead. Whenever he is going ahead and supplying through you, you go ahead and deduct TCS and give it to me so that I can know who are the supplier, who are might be sitting somewhere in the corner and supplying the goods. We want to trace them. So over here, what happened? Whenever one person goes online, he places the order. Order is forwarded to supplier. Supplier will go ahead, pack and send the goods. Now, remember always. Flipkart, being the e-commerce operator, has to go online, take registration as a TCS collector, which is PAN-based registration, mandatory registration. He will go ahead. So here, fifty fifty thousand was the supply. Now, if the supplier had gone ahead and charged CGST, it was an intrastate supply. Then Flipkart will deduct on the value zero point five percent CGST and zero point five percent SGST. Now, if it was Interstate supply. Then, in that scenario, flip the supplier will charge IGST. Flipkart will also deduct on the value one percent IGST. So, sir, Flipkart will go ahead and deduct fifty thousand rupees by one percent, five hundred rupees, and the remaining amount he will go ahead and transfer to him. Now, this guy will say, "Where is my five hundred rupees?" So, what Flipkart will do? Flipkart will go online and pay the. 500 rupees ka TCS. Flipkart will go ahead. Baba, I am telling Flipkart because that's an e-commerce operator. TCS is applicable on the e-commerce operator. They will have to go ahead and file GSTR 8, which is their monthly return, monthly statement. Also, it is called. Then they will go ahead. Once they go ahead and pay 500 rupees and file their monthly statement. Now, government will get the amount of 500. Government will give me the credit. Government will make it available to me. I will have to go ahead and validate, and the amount will come to my E cash ledger done, sir. The amount came to my E cash ledger. Now, sir, when Flipkart is going ahead and deducting TCS, TCS shall be deducted on what value? Always remember one thing, sir. TCS is on net turnover supplier wise. So, sir, if I have gone ahead and supplied ten lakh rupees ka supplies through Flipkart, aggregate turnover of taxable supplies what I have gone ahead and supplied through the e-commerce operator. Minus the supplies which are returned because in e-commerce what happens? Lot of returns come. I have supplied ten lakh rupees ka supply, five lakh rupees ka supply, five lakh rupees ka supplies came back. Then TDS will be deducted only with respect to the remaining supplies, which is five lakh rupees. Net value of taxable supplies paid TDS shall be deducted. Always remember notified supplies under nine five, which is housekeeping, accommodation, and transportation. On that there is no. T C S, which is there. Done, sir. Point is clear. Now, always remember one thing: rectification of error or mistake. For an example, they have gone ahead and deduct. They have done some mistake in a month. Then, sir, rectify in that statement to be furnished for the month in which error or omission is noticed, subject to interest at the rate of eighteen percent. For an example, Flipkart. Did not go ahead and deduct some TCS amount by mistake. Now, whenever they are going, they, whenever they notice the mistake, they can go ahead and deduct the TCS paid to the government along with interest at the rate of eighteen percent. Sir, what is the maximum time limit to rectify with respect to a financial year? For this financial year, when can the e-commerce op operator go ahead and rectify due date of monthly return of September of next financial year? Whatever is the due date of GSTR eight for this year. You have to see the next year September ka monthly return ka due date, okay, sir, or actual date of furnishing annual return, whichever is earlier. Done, sir. Sir, what if the collection only is done? Collection only is not done. Non-collection is equal to omission and attracts a penalty under section number twenty-two six. It goes ahead and says 
10,000 rupees or the TCS amount which was not collected, whichever is higher. Sir, the supplier who is supplying through the e-commerce, is he required to take compulsory registration? E-commerce operator being the TCS collector also has to take compulsory registration. When he pays the tax, you will get the credit only if you go ahead and take registration. So, government went ahead and told supplier through e-commerce has to take compulsory registration. But I hope you guys remember supplier of services are exempted up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh. And hence, in case if you are a supplier who is exempted up to 20 lakh or 10 lakh, in that scenario, Flipkart or except, uh, whoever is the uh, e-commerce operator, they will not deduct TCS also. Remember always, whoever is the supplier supplying through e-commerce, he has to go ahead and take compulsory registration. However, in case of supplier of service, I hope you guys remember, there is an exemption which is given up to 10 lakh or 20 lakh rupees. Yes, sir, point is clear. Next. Sir, supplier may also maintain the stock in e-commerce ka warehouse. For an example, this Flipkart or Amazon, they also have go-downs. Your stock, you can go ahead and keep in their go-down. But if your stock, you are going ahead and keeping in the, your, their go-down, you have to declare their place as your additional place of business. In that case, he should declare such warehouse as additional place of business. Sir, what are the scenario when TCS is not applicable? No TCS in the following cases. Number one. Transaction is out of scope of supply means sir you are going ahead and supplying for an example land and building through the e-commerce operator. Supposingly there is 99acres.com you 99acres.com may one buyer went saw your land and he uh, they directed it to you you went ahead and sold the land they made the payment to 99acres.com 99acres.com will not go ahead and deduct any TCS. Here they are going ahead and telling sale of land and land and building. The example 99acres.com. Whenever the transaction is out of scope of supply, there is no TCS ka provision applicable. Then transaction on which tax is payable under reverse charge by the recipient. In that scenario, also TCS provisions are not applicable. Transaction in nil rated wholly exempt non-taxable supply. In that scenario, also TCS will not come. Supplier is unregistered person. I hope you guys remember if this supplier is a person who is supplying supply of service. Supply of service ka case may anyways 20 lakh, 10 lakh ka exemption is given. If you are a supplier who is exempted from registration, how will you get the credit? And hence government went ahead and told the e-commerce operator shall not go ahead and deduct any TCS. Supplier unregistered person under section number 22.3. Then supply of service through e-commerce up to 20 lakh, 10 lakh you are not required registration. Then in that scenario also e-commerce operator will not deduct any TCS. Then no TCS on services which are covered under section number 95 that is housekeeping, accommodation and transportation service. Next. Sir, what is the annual statement which is to be filed by a TCS collector GSTR 9B by 31st December of the next financial year? Matching and mismatching. Everyone listen to me very carefully. In his Flipkart went ahead and showed in his GSTR 8 that Ramesh has so supplied for 1 lakh rupees. When you are going ahead and filing your GSTR 1 outward supply, you outward supplies, you went ahead and showed only 50,000 rupees. They are going ahead and telling government. Government is going ahead and telling your GSTR 1 their GSTR 8 matching will be done and if any mismatch happens then it has to be rectified if not rectified it will be added to your output tax liability it goes ahead and says supplier GSTR 1 to be matched with e-commerce operator ka GSTR 8 any discrepancy shall be communicated to both the parties both the parties code the communication will be done to be rectified by the supplier or operator in the same month of communication any discrepancy between their GSTR 8 and your GSTR 1, it will be immediately told to both of you. You have to go ahead and rectify it. Otherwise, it will be added to the output tax liability of the supplier in the succeeding month. You have to go ahead and pay the tax along with interest till the date of payment. Means when the liability had come till the date of payment, you will have to go ahead and pay interest. Done, sir. Point is clear. TDS and TCS ka difference I have given. TDS. 51 section may 2%, 52 section may it is always 1%. Remember like this, 51, 2%, 52, 1%. Done, sir. TDS is always 51, TCS is always 52. TDS and then TCS. Next, recipient deducts and pays to government. Here, e-commerce operator will deduct and pay to the government. Here, TDS obligation is only on the notified recipient. TCS is on every e-commerce who receives the 
payment. Next, TDS is only when value of the contract is greater than 2.5 lakh rupees. Sir, if e-commerce is collecting the consideration, TCS is applicable. There is no value limit. One rupee also collected by uh, e-commerce operator. He has to go ahead and deduct TCS. GSTR 7 is the return. Here there is a statement GSTR 8 to be filed. Next. Sir, e-commerce operator is required registration in which state? For an example, there is Flipkart which is there. Everyone, Flipkart ka head office, supposingly Flipkart is there. Flipkart ka head office is there in Karnataka. Okay, head office is there in Karnataka. Now, Flipkart has to go ahead and deduct TCS in all the states. So, sir, when they were going ahead and taking registration in all the state, they had to take one small premises in all the state. And hence, government went ahead and made it easy for them. And government told, whenever you are going ahead and applying for registration, you will have part A and part B. Do one thing. If you want registration in the state of Assam, don't take any physical premises there. Do one thing. In your part A, just say that you want registration in Assam. In part B, give your head office card detail and give your head office related address proof etc you don't have to go ahead and take one physical premises in the state of assam supposingly this flipkart has to go ahead and take registration in andhra then part a may they will go ahead and tell andhra may they want registration and part b may they will give their head office card detail that's it that was the convenience which was given to a e-commerce operator in each state or UT, you are required to take registration because your supplier and your buyer will be there in each of the states then your obligation for collecting would be there for every intrastate or interstate supply and hence you will be taking registration in all the states which are there. How will you take registration? Part A may fulfill that state. Part A may you have to fill that state where you want registration. Part B may you put your head office car detail. Next. Sir, GST authority greater than equal to deputy commissioner can go ahead and require e-commerce operator to furnish the details of supplies of goods, services or both affected by it. For an example, deputy commissioner wants to know that how much is how much of the goods is supplied by Ramesh through Flipkart. Then deputy commissioner can go ahead and tell Flipkart, hey, you come over here. I want details of supplies of goods, services or both affected through you. Might be by this person or might be the total supplies which were done by various suppliers, I want the details. So Deputy Commissioner has that power, they can go ahead and ask. Details of stock which are maintained. So Flipkart, you are going ahead and maintaining the stock for Ramesh, right? I want the details of the stock which are available with you. So he can go ahead and ask. Who can go ahead and ask? GST authority greater than equal to Deputy, Deputy Commissioner and e-commerce operator has to furnish the details within 15 days otherwise there can be a penalty up to 25,000 yes sir point is clear always remember in your exam sir if in the invoice it is CGST and HGST being charged then Flipkart will also go and deduct 0.5% deduct CGST and 0.5% SGST in the invoice if it is IGST which is charged then on the value they will go ahead and deduct 1% IGST yes sir point is clear now, there is one circular which is there. Circular says, go, circular goes ahead and talks about T-board. Always remember one thing. Everyone over here. T-board is now online. Yes, sir. T-board is now online. What happens in the online T-board? There will be suppliers who want to sell their tea. There will be buyers who want to go ahead and buy. Now, buyers will go ahead and make the payment. They will go ahead and make the payment to the supplier. When they are making the payment to the supplier, the question which was asked, was whether the T board is required to deduct TCS. Yes, it was told that T board has to go ahead and deduct TCS. So basically what happens, supplier and buyers will be there on the T board online website where people will go and do the bidding. Bidding ke liye, there will be an auction here also. Okay? And then the once the bidding is done, they will go ahead and make the payment and payment will be forwarded. When T board, because it's an e-commerce operator, are they required to deduct TCS? It was clarified. Yes, T-Board will be required to deduct TCS when they are going ahead and making the payment to the supplier. And also, when the T-Board is going ahead and making the payment to the auctioneer for the brokerage amount, then also T-Board is required to deduct TCS. This was the clarification which came. TCS shall be deducted by the T-Board, coffee board, rubber board, etc. For from seller that is the tea producer or net value of supply of goods that is tea from and from auctioneer on the net value of supply of service that is the brokerage. 
so when they are going ahead and making the payment for the supply of the tea and when they are making the payment of the brokerage to the auctioneer the tea board has to go ahead and deduct tcs being an e-commerce operator done sir point is clear remember one thing everyone for tds deductor for late filing of their gstr7 everyone listen to me very carefully for tds deductor late filing of their gstr7 the late fee is made rupees 25 up to a maximum of 1000 under cgst act but for tcs collector there is no reduction tcs collector gstr8 and gstr8 ka late fee still is 100 rupees per day up to a maximum of 5000 rupees there is no reduction with respect to tcs collector yes sir point is clear here we are done with your quick recap of the chapter of tcs yes sir we are all clear baba enjoying the video like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel that is very important right sir done everyone and also whenever you go ahead and see a video you have enjoyed it don't forget to share with your friends because sharing is caring you have to care for your friend also don't be selfish please share with your friend so that he is also benefited if you feel you are also benefited right everyone i will go ahead and stop my discussion on tcs over here everyone